This is Old Fashioned Day in our, in our Bible class, and I am, I am wearing the, the garments that are worn by the, the Amish people, and uh, to them it may not be old fashioned, but uh, it's very interesting, and we're delighted to see so many of you dressed so beautifully uh, for this Old Fashioned Day. Uh, we are so glad that the blessings that used to be are right now, and that all that God did do, He does do that all that God did have, he has more. <laughs> He's not running short on any of the blessings of heaven. We are studying at this time in this class the promises of God uh, because so many human beings read the promises and get very little from them. Uh, I've told you before that it's so easy to have something in your home on a piece of paper that gives you rights to certain things, but unless you cash them in, you know, they have no, no value to you whatsoever. No value whatever. Charles Haddon Spurgeon uh, had what he called an almshouse, where he kept very, very poor people. And one afternoon, he went around visiting some of these old people in his almshouses that were living on the mercy of the church. And uh, he'd sit down in one house where there was a very old woman in her 80s, and she was telling how poor she was and how glad she was that he was giving her food and a place to sleep and, and so forth. And he looked up on the wall and saw a piece of paper and he got a little closer to it. And he said, what is this? Oh, she says, a friend of mine many years ago gave me that and says, I just put it on the wall, uh, you know, in, in memory of this person. He said, could I have it for a few hours, please? Well, she said, sure, you're the pastor, you can have it. So he went and took it to the bank and when he came back, he says, uh, lady, uh, you're exceedingly wealthy. She says, what? She says, yes. Says, this is what's been left you in an inheritance. And you're exceedingly wealthy. She says, you don't have to stay in a little almshouse like this where you live so meagerly. She says, well, I didn't know that. He said, didn't you ever read what was on that paper? Well, she said, I saw my name was on it. Yes, as your name is on it, but more than that, everything in that paper is yours. And you know, neighbors, if you'd ever get it down inside of you, that everything in that book is yours, you might start living a different way. You'd come up out of the devil's alms house, and you'd stop messing around with poverty, and you'd say, hey, here, I'm a prince, and I'm a princess. I belong to the royal family, and, and, this, and this is my... This is my uh, trust from the Lord. All I've got to do is say, listen, Lord, I believe in what you said, and I accept it, and then it's yours. Can you say amen? amen? In our lesson today, it has to do with the promises related to endurance. Now, I, I think that's all right. A lot of promises are related in such a way that they're yours if you persist in being what you are. Uh, even, even sometimes when you're when you're left money from relatives, they say, this is your money. When you get 21 years old, you can have it. And if you're 16 years old, you don't have it. It's when you get 21 years old that you have it. And so there are conditions related to it. And the promises of God have to do with endurance, of sticking with it. Uh, you can't take a promise halfway and drop it. It don't work that way. It works when you stick with it. Some people have great uh, faith for healing until they get sick. And they just lay it all aside until they get well. Then they have faith for healing again. Well, you really don't need it when you're well. Uh, you really need that faith when you're sick. And that's when the promises work, when you're sick. Now, we read first in Hebrews eleven twenty-seven. It says, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Isn't that something? He wasn't afraid of the king and all of his might and all of his power. It'd be like you saying, I'm not afraid of any government on the face of this earth today. He says, for he endured. That's your key words related to this lesson today. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses saw beyond his problems of that day. He saw beyond a little, a little old king sitting on a little old puny golden throne. You still here? Yeah, he saw beyond the treasures of this world. He saw beyond the things that were around about him. And it says he endured. 
If we could just get that much down into our spiritual beings today, we'd never be the same as long as we live on the face of this earth. The promises of God are real. The promises of God are for you. But they're not yours if you don't act upon them. They're not yours if you don't take them. They're not yours unless you use them in your daily lives. Endurance is not an easy subject in the world that we live in today. In our world today, we've got millions of quitters. They, they start in these great marathon races that you see on the, on the, on the television. Sometimes they have 15,000 at start. You say, man, this is going to be a race. About an hour later, they've only got about 10,000. And then about another hour later, they've only got about 1,000. You say, hey, they're getting thinner here. Well, you ought to be at the end of the line and see how thin they are. And it's not the gang that begins, it's the ones that ends that makes the, that makes the goal that wins the prize. And in this spiritual warfare that we're in, it's not the beginners, it's the conclusioners. If there's any such word. <laughs> Endurance, the Bible says, is happiness. Now, now that'll get you down, won't it? But it's in James 5 and 11. It says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. And uh, when we look back through the Bible and see men like Abraham that endured and, and see men like Moses who endured, and then we say, Yeah, yeah, we agree with that. We can't be happy or successful that endure. Even in our own lifetimes, we are so glad for a person that goes all the way with God right up until the time he goes to heaven. He doesn't falter midway. He doesn't quit and, and drop out and say, well, I can't make it. He says, we count them happy which endure. You've heard of the patience of Job, and he was a very happy man in the latter part of his life. And have seen the end of the Lord We've all of us seen what God does in the conclusion of people's lives. We've all seen what glory and grace he brings to us right up until the end of our lives. That the Lord is pitiful. The Lord does understand you and me. He knows when you're in trouble. He knows when your heart is hurt. He knows when you're discouraged. The Lord is pitiful. How many are glad for that? And he's of a tender mercy. Sometimes you, you, you fall and your friends forever bring it up to you. Yeah, you remember this. You remember when you fell. You remember that. God doesn't do that. When God brings you back into his love and God brings you back into his fellowship, he doesn't keep reminding you where you fell out. He just forgets that and he loves you where you are. I'm mean, glad God loves you where you are. Glory be to God. He loves you where you are right now. I mean, right now, this minute. He loves you where you are right now. And he's going to love you better when you draw closer to him. If you believe that, say amen. Now, in Mark's gospel, chapter 13 and verse 13, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He was talking to his apostles there. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I think he was laying down a, a, a very strong situation there. He said, Now, you've chosen to be disciples. I got bad news for you. <laughs> if you be my disciple, they're going to hate you like they hated me. They'll hate you without a reason to hate you. I hear people around this area here and, and other areas have said, uh, you know, I, I don't like that man Sumrall. And someone says, well, uh, what did he do to you? Nothing. Have you ever met him? No. Have you ever seen him? No. Well, why do you hate him? I don't know. I just hate him. <laughs> well, you, you see, uh, then you got to know who's on the inside. It isn't God because God is love. So it must be the devil on the inside. Now the devil can make you hate one of God's servants that you should be loving. In fact, we should love all of God's servants. You know, sometimes it's, we become a spiritually picky. I like this preacher and I don't like that one and I like this and I don't like... You know, the devil will make you that way to, and you know what, what you'll finally end up? You've gotten so picky you don't like anybody. You found fault with all of them. Every man that stands up in the pulpit can bless you if you let him bless you. Every man that stands in the pulpit can, can help you and teach you a little bit of something if you just listen long enough. And God wants us to love all of his servants. If you know it, say amen. amen. Jesus said to his disciples, now listen. He says, you're going to be hated of men. And not because of yourself, for my name's sake. For my name's sake, I've come to save the world. When you join with me to save the world, the devil gets his buddies out after you. 
But he says, he that shall endure unto the end, if you can take it, if you can stay with it, if you stay unto the end, you're going to have a glorious redemption, a glorious salvation. The great promises of God are yoked with endurance. They are not yoked with quitters. They're yoked with endurance. God wants you and God wants me to go across the finish line, just like the Apostle Paul, when he said, I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. And there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Don't you like that? Don't you like that? That's what God wants you and me to have within us, burning within us, rising up within us. You, gotta, you got to know if it, that you're going to be successful in a Christian life. You got to know it down inside. Inside of you, you got to know for sure I'm going to make it all the way. And you got to just keep saying it. And as you know it and keep saying it, it'll work. If you start doubting it, you're in problems. Well, I don't know where I can make it or not. The devil said, well, I'll see to that. I'll see to that. You're going to say, yes, I'm going to make it. I'm going to go all the way. I keep telling everybody, the last day of my life is going to be the brightest one I ever had. The last year of my ministry is going to be the best year I ever had. I just won't have anything else but that. I don't expect to be put on somebody's shelf to become an oddity for people to come and look at and say, oh, he's a has-been. No, I won't ever be one. I won't ever be one. I refuse to be one. You said, how about retirement? That didn't start in heaven. That was cooked up in hell. God never started that. Your golden years are your best years. Your, they are your intelligent years. They are years when you know something and you have something and you ought to get out there and give it to everybody. And you shouldn't feel like you don't belong here and that you're not uh, doing well and all that business. God wants us all to be blessed. And he wants us to be blessed till we get to heaven. If you know it, say amen. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Like I was telling you a few moments ago. But only one receives a prize. But he says, so run that you might obtain. So run. I tell you, you run in this race and you all get a prize. There's just not one getting it. We all get it. If we, if we make this race successful, it's not for one. It's for every one of us to get the prize. If you know it, say amen. In, in, in the Psalms, in Psalm 37 and verse 25, it says, I have been young. The, the great Psalm is speaking. Now I am old. He says, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God gives power to those that endure. And he gives you power to endure. Here's a man that said, now listen, I've tried this for a long time. I, I, I was young and I tried it. Now I'm old and I'm still trying it. And God has never failed one time, he said. And not only does it apply to him, he'll even bless the children after them. If you're glad for that, say amen. He will bless the children after them. That same great man said in Psalm 37 and verse 37, in the same chapter. He says, Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright, for the end of that one is peace. Say peace. I'm believing for that. You can't bring trouble to a man that's lived for God for many years. You just think you can. But then it's according to how he reacts to it. You know, some of us don't know when we're in trouble, when we're out of trouble. Somebody has to say to me, are you in trouble? And I said, not that I know of. I said, it sure sounds like it. I said, I hadn't heard it yet. I, I am not paying a lot of attention to what the world says about me. I'm not paying a lot of attention to what the world's doing. I'm paying attention to what God's doing. Did you know that right now, God is doing more than he's ever done in the history of the world as far as I can see? Did you know there are more people being reached for Jesus right now than ever in the history of the world at any one time? Did you know there are being more people healed today than has ever been healed at any one time before? If there was ever a time when people ought to be excited, they ought to be excited today. <laughs> Ooh, this is the day to get it. This is the day to be excited because God is doing so many great things. He is certainly, he is certainly not slowed down. He's not a quitter. He's going to go right on through until the Lord Jesus takes us up to heaven. If you know it, say amen. The Lord Jesus told us a story in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning about verse 7. He said, And all these virgins arose 
and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, and for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and for you. But go ye, ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. There were those who had enough oil to go all the way through. There were those that had enough oil to stay with it until the bridegroom came. There were those that could endure until the very end. Somebody had been negligent. Somebody hadn't kept the oil coming into the cruise. Somebody, the five, Jesus called them the foolish virgins. I don't know what they'd been doing. They'd been stewing around doing something, but they had, hadn't kept the oil in their lamps properly. But there were those that said, we're watchful. And if you're not watchful, you won't be diligent until the end. It says, listen, we're going to have plenty of oil in the vessel right straight through. And they had it. And when the bridegroom came, they went in rejoicing because they had been faithful all the way. God's calling for you and for me to keep oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit within us. Nobody ever backslides full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you hear what I said? It's all drained out. They're empty. That's when you backslide. So if you can keep the refueling and keep the re-blessing and keep the re-anointing, just keep the coming in and coming in and coming in, you're going to be ready for any emergency, for every emergency. And when you get to the glory world, you'll hand it to the angels as you go through the game and say, here's some more leftovers. <laughs> I've got some left over. Don't you want to arrive there that way? Want to arrive there with the leftovers saying, say, Lord, I didn't just make it. I didn't just get through the gates. I got here with so much left over. I'm just laying it aside now. I won't need it anymore. I don't know where this story uh, has to do with the reality or not that Jesus told, but he said 50% of them just didn't have it. I hope that's not the quota that we're thinking about today. I sure hope there's more than 50% of so-called Christians that are keeping their, 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 their oil keeping their Holy Ghost, keeping their blessing, keeping their anointing, and keeping the fire burning within their hearts and lives. I hope there's more than 50%. You're going to say something or not? Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just hoping there'll be more than 50% that'll, that'll have enough oil to go clear through. Don't matter what kind of tribulation, what kind of sorrow, what kind of thing happens in the world, that we'll have enough to go all the way. We won't have to go back and try to find something and get left out. Neighbors going back is bad business. Uh, don't, don't, don't ever do it in Jesus' name. The overcomer of the book of the Revelation is the one who was faithful unto death. He got all the promises. In Revelation 2 and 10, it says, Fear none of these, those things which thou shalt suffer. That's, that's a strong word, isn't it? Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and yet, and ye shall have tribulation for ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and then I will give thee a crown of life. If we can find faithfulness all the way, Jesus says there is a crown, a crown of life awaiting for us. Now, there, there are things that happen to people. That, that, that I don't think they ought to happen. You know, I, I feel so sorry for people. It looks like they get more than their, their fair share of problems in this world. And, and you don't know why they come that way. But all we know is this. If you will be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have an adequate reward on the other side. And if you are close to the Christ crucified in this life, you're going to be close to the Christ glorified in that life. I mean, I want to be close to the Christ glorified. I sure don't want to be sitting out there on a million mile perimeter somewhere uh, hoping I can go up and see him once a year. I want to be right up close by, but I'm sure carnal Christians won't be there. I am sure that people that live with the world won't be there. I am sure that those that are really dedicated to him will be there, and I'd just like to be up there. And uh, I don't think that's a wrong place to be. I think it's a good place to be. Can you say amen? And so he told them there that if they would just be faithful until the day they go home, don't quit, don't stop, don't slow up, don't, 
Don't say, well, I'm not able to do this, and I'm not able to do that. You're able to do anything you want to do. And you can find a way to do anything you want to do. I wish the church would be so full of fellowship that you just, just couldn't afford to miss it. I wish the church would be so full of love that you just had to come to get tanked up on it. But I can tell you one thing. You can't come in a little late and leave a little early and have fellowship. Well, okay. All three of you, thank you very much. If you want fellowship, be here a half hour early, like I am. Shaking hands with all these folks and smiling at them and feeling what a hand grip they got. Some of these people right here, about 80 years old, make you want to nurse your hand for a few hours. They're so strong. And, and you get to know people by fellowship. And when church is over, that don't mean you got to go home. That just means one stage of the worship is finished. Some of you run like a jackrabbit. As if it's something to get away from. No, no, no. There are others that just stay here for a whole hour. And they're the ones that drink it in and drink it in and, and drink it in. Fellowship is a wonderful thing. And fellowship is a blessing. And fellowship is an anointing. And fellowship is the thing that will give you endurance unto the end. We drink from one another. Can you say amen? In Romans 9, 22, it said this way. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? God has, God has this endurance too. God has this patience also. So he is not asking you or me to do something that he's not going to do himself. And, and God has endurance. You can just fall 50 times and he'll pick you up every time if you'll let him. Are you here? Some of the greatest Christians that ever lived had a sorry start. They just fell down and fell down and fell down and fell down and God just kept picking them up. You would have quit, but God didn't. He just kept picking them up. God endured and God is still enduring. He's enduring me and I'm mighty thankful for it. And he's enduring everybody today. And that's his great love. And he's going to do that right into the end. He's, he's not going to quit halfway. In the book of James, in chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Christians can endure temptation. And they can overcome anything the enemy has. If you know it, say amen. Blessed is he, is, is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. If you endure, there's a crown waiting for you. And, 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 and enduring, some, you might get the wrong idea about that. It may not be half so bad as you think it is. I know one thing, I found a lot better enduring Jesus than did enduring the devil. And all these people down in, 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 the, in, in the lower elements of our city that are living in the slums and living in the dregs of, of humanity, they know what I'm talking about. The devil hasn't been a very good taskmaster. The happiest people and the best off people in the world are God's people. And I'm sure glad to be one of God's people. I'm sure glad to be one of God's people. Uh, the Lord Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power. Now that's, that's a promise to us that are his followers. I give you power. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And that's not speaking about the little animals either. It's, it's bad people that want to sting you and, and hurt you. And he says, and over all the power of the enemy, over all the power, say all. all. Well, bless God, that's it. Over all the power of the enemy, and the, listen, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means get you down, slow you up, and stop you, and say, well, I can't go any further. I can't go any further. You and I both know that there are hundreds of people in our community today that did go to church and something happened that they were not able to endure and, and they don't go anymore and those people need our love and they need our prayers and they need our encouragement that will show them that there's a prize at the end of this Christian life if they go just a little further how many believe there's a prize at the end of this life there's a crown a crown of gold waiting for those that will serve the Lord Jesus Christ Isaiah said a long time ago in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord, upon Jehovah, they that wait upon Jehovah, that means be quiet and move slowly, wait upon Jehovah, they shall renew their strength. 
They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, but they won't be weary. <laughs> they shall run, but they won't be weary. And, and they shall walk, but they will not faint. Now that could be the golden text of what we're talking about today. The promises of God for those who endure, for those who will not quit, for those who will not stop, for those that will go all the way with God. Daniel said it this way in Daniel 11 and 32. He says, the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. The unusual, the amazing, the remarkable. Those that know God, they won't be weak. They're going to be strong and they shall do exploits. I'm ready for the exploits. I'm ready for the exploits. May I bless you, Father. We thank you for the promises of God. We, prom we thank you for these that are related to endurance. Really, this lesson should be up front to say, now we're going to talk about a lot of good things and they're yours if you just keep on. And Lord, we ask you to help everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone that looks at me on television, that they will say, I'm going to endure to the end because those that endure to the end are the ones that are saved. And we ask you today to touch our hearts, to strengthen our hearts, and to take away from us anything that would cause us not to endure. 